Hi everyone, it's Ibrahim again. I'm one of the internal medicine trainee in the NHS. We're doing this course called uh, Post-Graduation Pathway in the UK, an in-depth guide for IMGs. Uh, the lesson that I'm going to talk about today is very important and I think, I think it's the key of the entire course. We're going to discuss about a doctor's training structure in the UK. I hope that by now you have already seen Dr. Ibriz's discussion about role of different organizations in the training and uh, with this uh, lesson I hope that you will understand how the whole training pathway is structured uh, and at what step and we're going to move on to that. Let's get started. So to begin with we will start uh, residency or training in the UK for UK graduates then understanding the whole pathway will move on to uh, for the international medical graduates as you can see the whole thing starts with foundation training for UK graduates which comprises of two years and then depending on the specialty they want to pursue after this foundation training there are two types of training one is called run-through training and another is called uncoupled training so all of the specialties are divided into these two types of training so run-through training so some specialties are have a training structure of run-through training where the recruitment happens only once and then all the years follow and then you finally complete your training so st1 stands for specialty training so all these years say for gp training is three years for pediatric training is seven years during this entire training you have to complete the required exams uh, to successfully complete uh, those training as you can see happy man so let's move on to the next bit which is called uncoupled training so uncoupled training as the name suggests it's not coupled so the two parts are core training and specialty training so the core training is separate and specialty training is separate and two recruitment happens at two times so CT stands for core training and after the core training being completed you have to complete the eligibility criteria for special training then have to apply again to go through the recruitment process and the similar way you complete the special training years and you complete the training as you can see the special training starts from st3 or st4 level because the core training was the initial bit of that whole training so let's talk about more core training so internal medicine training is the core module or core part of all the uncoupled medical specialties starting from microbiology to cardiology to gastroenterology same goes for surgical all uncoupled surgical specialties the core training is the first bit core surgical training there are another thing which is called acute care common stem these are more for acute medical specialties like uh, uh, this in this SCCS curriculum you go through these four um, specialties six months um, each and then you uh, do the third year in a specific one so what what happens when you are a specialty training so you've already completed the membership exams and um, the other prerequisites to be in a specialty training and then you will complete your fellowship or other exams which is necessary for the training to complete and after the completion of that specialty training you will be awarded a certificate by your deanery with which you can go to GMC and apply for specialist registration. So what happens for IMGs now? For IMGs, for FY1 year, if you have completed a GMC approved internship, then you don't have to go through FY1. For FY2, if you go and do a non-training job, you can get the crest form signed, which will be equivalent to the FY2. Run through training for IMGs, no difference at all, it's the same process of recruitment and getting into the training for uncoupled training as i am in right now in core training which is internal medicine training and the whole pathway is not any different for imgs but one thing can be different for imgs which is uh if you have already completed mrcp or mrcs back in your home country and you are found um, overqualified to apply for a core level training which is the case for surgery for many of our IMG doctors so you can take this alternate pathway you can come and get GM's registration and work your way towards getting this alternate certificate of core competences so you have to get this alternate certificate of core competences before you can apply for the specialty training which follows the same path as uh, the second portion of the uncoupled one So what should you do now? So your first job would be to find out 
what is your choice of specialist training like? Is it a run-through training or it is an uncoupled training? Then you have an idea how the whole training pathway will be structured. Then you have to find this person specification and identify the key information that you need to know, the idea of overqualification or underqualification or whatever. Then you have to find the recruitment timeline and then you have to make targets to achieve before your training application deadline. So that was all about the training structure. Please continue to watch the entire lessons uh, where we will discuss the competencies, recruitment timeline and all those other important things uh, about a doctor's training uh, in the UK. Thank you for being with us. So that was all about the training structure uh, uh, in the UK for uh, both UK graduates and international medical graduates. I hope that made sense. Uh, in the next lesson, we are going to talk about in depth about run through and uncoupled specialties and uh, uh, some discussion about what the residency and fellowship will mean in terms of the UK training. At the same time, what are other out of program opportunities you might have when you are in a training. Thank you. Thank you.